hello welcome back to my channel in today's video i am going to be doing a book haul in fact the last book haul that i'm ever going to be filming for this channel which is kind of weird to say out loud uh, but i'll explain a little bit more about that at the end of this video before then i'm going to show you all of the books that i've purchased over the past few months i believe over the past few months these have all been kind of languishing on my tbr cart and i realized recently that i had purchased more books than i had intended this year one of my goals at least like goals internally i guess not a goal that i had really shared with anyone was that i was going to purchase less books this year and while I have definitely purchased fewer books than I have in the past. I have definitely still purchased quite a few and I thought I'd share those with you before I completely stop doing book hauls in general. So without further ado, let me show you all of the books that I've purchased over the past few months. First up, let's start with the mass market paperbacks because I don't know, I've kind of become a sucker for these over the past couple of years, especially in 2020. I feel like during the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of people were purchasing a lot of used historical romances. I was a sucker for those. I'm also a sucker for new historicals. So I have four historicals here that I picked up over the past few months. First one is for a video that I am filming. It is Wild Rain by Beverly Jenkins. This one is about Spring, who is the sister of the hero in Tempest, I believe. I read Tempest earlier this year, and while it wasn't like my favorite historical romance ever, I really do like Beverly Jenkins' writing. From what I can tell, it's like the only book that I've read of hers so far. Far. but I'm excited to give this one a try and again it is for a video that is going to be coming out I think sometime in September so I will be reading this at some point before then. I'm very excited about it because Spring was a character that I wanted to know more about in that book so excited to read this one and it's set in Wyoming so it's gonna have that kind of like wild west setting and yeah I don't know overall just very excited for this book. Next up we have Hit Me With Your Best Scott by Susan Enoch. This book I picked up because I was like maybe I'll do a like pun based historical romance reading vlog maybe I don't know I feel like that's gonna happen one of these days just kind of like a random casual reading vlog more on that later i don't know much about this one i just know that the hero is a highlander and our heroine is not really intending to get married but she ends up being rescued by the highlander and i think they fall in love which is something that i'm into i do love a good highlander romance so excited to give this one a try the cover i really really liked on this one it just kind of spoke to me i've never read this author before so i want to kind of branch out and try new historical romance authors new to me at least and this one i don't know struck my fancy i saw it at barnes noble picked it up and um i'll be getting to this hopefully sometime this year Next Next up, we have Her Night with the Duke by Diana Quincy. This I've heard good things about. I want to say Samantha from Books with Samantha has read this one and enjoyed it. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting setup, I feel like, for this book. We have our hero who I think is betrothed to our heroine's stepdaughter. Like, she is taking care of this girl for a lot of her life, I think maybe, but they're kind of like the same age. Like I think the heroine married someone much older than her that had a daughter, you know, that's kind of like close in age to her. And yeah, she ends up falling for her stepdaughter's intended. So I'll be curious to see kind of how that setup shakes out, um, but excited to read this one. And I do, again, kind of like the cover on this one as well. Um, disappointed that I don't think any of these have step backs, but like, it's fine. They're cute anyway. And then next up, one with just an abhorrent Target sticker right in the middle is A Duchess a Day by Cheris. I think actually the audiobook narrator said Cheris Michaels. And this one is a Snow White retelling. It's a Snow White and the Huntsman retelling specifically. And I listened to the audiobook for this for a video that is going to be coming out hopefully in the next couple of weeks here. This one was really, really cute and I did really, really enjoy it. I would actually recommend the audiobook. I thought it was really fun. I just think the dynamic of this was something that I'd never really read before. The Huntsman is very gruff, but he's definitely not a brute. And then our heroine is trying to get out of an engagement and trying to kind of like hook this guy. She's very forward, which I really like. So I don't know. This was really fun. I would recommend it. And I believe, I don't want to say this is this author's first book, but it might be. I think that's, I think that's accurate. I liked this one and I will be carrying on with the series at some point. I think the second book is out. This was good. Glad I bought it. Glad to have it in my collection. Next up is a book that is going to be in that same video that that historical romance is going to be in. Uh, we have My Favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. I'm trying to work my way through Christina Lauren's backlist this year. I feel like I've read a lot of their books and I don't know, I just want to kind of like complete that and be able to do maybe like a guide to Christina Lauren. I haven't loved all of their books, but I do feel like that might be a worthwhile video. Uh, but this one specifically is for a video, again, that's going to come hopefully, fingers crossed, in the next couple of weeks. I haven't gotten around to reading this one yet, but I feel like this one is set like in a college setting and it's like a romance between two professors or something like that. I don't know too much about this one. I kind of like going into Christina Lauren books with as little information as possible so that I'm not disappointed 
wanted, but I am excited to get to this one. I've heard good things about this one from my friend who I like share similar Christina Lauren taste with. I don't tend to have like the popular Christina Lauren opinions <laughs> when it comes to their books. So anyway, uh, excited to give this one a try and you'll see my thoughts and opinions on it coming quite soon. Kind of switching pace. This was an impulse purchase, but one that I am glad to have made. And it is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. It was an impulse purchase, not because I wasn't intending to buy the book, but it was an impulse purchase because I was at Target. I saw it was assigned to first edition and I was like, I have to have like the first edition. Duh. Like that's, that's what I want. This one is about Maverick Carter, who is Star's dad. Star is the main character of Hate You Give. I have read both of Angie Thomas's like previous works, gave them both five stars, loved them. And I just am super excited to read this book. I feel like Maverick's backstory was something that I really wanted more of in The Hate You Give. So reading Concrete Rose and getting a whole book on what his life was like before, you know, he had kids and stuff, I think will be really, really interesting. This is one that I hope to get to sometime later in the summer. I want to say that I've read both of Angie Thomas's previous books in the summer and that just kind of like worked well for me kind of fitting in the vibes. So yes, excited to have this. It was a really good impulse purchase, I will say. I'm looking down at my stack and I'm realizing that a lot of these books <laughs> were purchased at Target. I really haven't been book shopping in like a Barnes and Noble or Half Price Books really at all during this pandemic, maybe like once each at both of those stores. So I've mostly just been like kind of perusing the Target aisles, kind of picking up things on a whim, but definitely things that like are for videos or that people that I know and enjoy have talked about. Uh, so this one was definitely influenced by Miss Katie Coulson. I got the push and this this one just sounds like something I'm going to enjoy. It's kind of a twist on a domestic thriller from what it sounds like because this story is about a woman and her baby and she thinks something's wrong with her baby but everyone thinks that she is crazy for thinking something's wrong with her baby. I don't want to know much more about this book than that. Katie just kind of sold this book to me and it seems like it's going to be really fucking scary because as someone who wants children, having a child that like might be kind of like against you in some way. Like it just, it sounds kind of terrifying. So excited to give this one a try. I'll probably read this one like late summer, early fall, realistically speaking, because that's kind of when I enjoy reading thrillers, but I'm glad to have picked this one up. I could not get this from my library. I think that's primarily why I decided to pick this one up, but it was still kind of an impulse purchase, like if we're being 100% honest. Okay, the next two books are impulse purchases again from Target. Although I will say a lot of my impulse purchasing from Target or really from any bookstore in general tends to be me looking at a book and thinking like, oh, I have a video idea for that. And that is the case for these two books. I have Where the Crawdads Sing and The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. So I picked this one up because of the cover and because I had heard my friends crying over this book and I want a good cry this year. As we know, that did not happen for me when I attempted to make myself cry, but maybe this one will do it for me. I don't know, fingers crossed. But I decided I was going to pick up this book as well because I was considering doing a video where I read historical fiction and see if maybe there is a historical fiction out there for me. I have made this assessment that like I, for some reason, don't like historical fiction. And I would say that's probably pretty accurate. I did read The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, which a lot of people seem to enjoy and didn't really love that one. But I'm hoping that like by reading a few different historical fiction books over the next, I don't know, couple of months for a vlog, maybe that'll change. Like maybe I'll find my perfect historical fiction or maybe I will find out that, you know, once and for all, this just really isn't for me. But I don't like to leave any stone unturned. So of course I'm gonna like do the vlog and figure that out <laughs> for myself. Where the Crawdads Sing is set I want to say in Louisiana, I could be completely wrong about that. No, it's set in North Carolina. It is about a girl and I want to say some sort of murder takes place. I don't know if that's true, but it is kind of a coming of age story, I believe. And yes, it does say possible murder here. So I don't want to know much more about this one than that. If, if there's like a thrillery aspect to this, I definitely don't want to know much more than that. But I've heard, I mean, tons of great things about this book. So I feel like it's finally time for me to bite the bullet and give it a try. And if I don't like it, back to Half Price Books, it will go. And then The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna is a book set during the Great Depression, which is a time, frankly, that I don't know nearly enough about. So I feel like even if this is not emotionally impactful, it will at the very least educate me in some way. It is about our main character, Elsa, as she deals with the Great Depression. I don't want to know, again, more, much more about this than that. I really don't like knowing a ton about books before going in. I tend to pick books based on hype and based on just like general overall vibes. Like, do I think I'm going to like this? Will this work for a video? So I'm sorry that this haul is probably not as informative as it could be, but this is going to be read for a video and I'll give you my thoughts there when it happens. Next up are two middle grade books. I feel like there are quite a few middle grades in this overall haul because I'm just more interested in reading middle grade. I read a few in mid 2020. I want to say it was around this time last year and I fell in love with middle grade. I didn't read a ton. I think I read three or four maybe last year and I gave almost all of them five stars. They were really fantastic and it just opened my eyes to how fantastic 
fantastic middle grade can be. And I've also started watching more people who recommend middle grade books recently, so I was just inspired to pick some books up. This one actually wasn't a recommendation from anyone. It was just one that I loved the cover of, and I was in an Amazon bookstore, and I was like, I kind of want to pick this up. It is called Here in the Real World by Sarah Pennypacker. And this book is about a boy and a girl and how they like play together one summer. I think one of the kids has a slightly harder life than the other, and I think they kind of like learn about life and that kind of thing by hanging out together and like playing all summer. I don't know the details obviously because I don't really know anyone who's recommended this book, but it just seemed like something that I would enjoy. It was kind of giving me like Bridge to Terabithia vibes, but like maybe less depressing. So I'm excited to give this one a go and um, just excited to have this on my shelf. This is maybe like a little bit... Mm, dreamy of me, but like I just, I like the idea too of having middle grade on my shelves for when, you know, hopefully I do have children. I will have middle grades on my shelves for them. Mm, that just sounds so lovely. Anyway, I have this one, excited about it. Next up, I have one that has been highly recommended by many friends who usually read middle grade and friends who don't normally read middle grade. It is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. I'm so excited to own this book. I have had my eye on this book for quite a while. I've hesitated to pick it up though because the price online was quite expensive for a hardcover. I think they're pretty much only publishing this in paperback at the moment, so it's kind of hard to get my hands on this one, but I'm very excited to have this one. It is about a cursed little girl who's blamed for a lot of things, I believe, and she finally gets to be free and have fun in the wondrous society. So I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to know again the details of this, but like very excited to pick this one up. I really feel like I want to do just like a casual, fun, whimsical middle grade reading vlog at some point, a la Miss Alexandra Roseland. I don't know. I definitely can't like ever achieve that level of just whimsy in my vlogs, but I'd love to be able to do something like that like in the future, you know, like doing something fun with some middle grades. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Let's move on to the next book. Okay, this is absolutely the silliest reason to have ever picked up a book, but I picked this up because this like the dimensions of this book are so strange and I don't know if the camera's really picking up on this. Let me show you a regular mass market to kind of show you. But this book is just extremely like long. It's just long and skinny and I don't understand it. But I do like Lisa Jewell and I'd never heard about this book, so I thought I would pick this one up. I feel like this one was probably republished. Yeah, because it originally came out in 2009, but I think they put a new cover on it and made it a little like mass market. It's called The Truth About Melody Brown and it's a book about a girl who can't remember anything before her ninth birthday. I think that comes into play in some way in this thriller. Again, I don't want to know anything about this book. If you want to know more about this book, you should look it up on Goodreads. Uh, but I will be reading this probably in the fall because again, that's like when I enjoy thrillers. But excited to have this, excited to like hold this. I don't know. It just feels good in the hands. I will say the font in this is just abominably small, but she's cute. And I, I feel like I could tuck this into a purse very easily, like a tote like a skinny tote. Next up, I have three books that are finished copies sent to me by publishers. First up, we have The Last Flight by Julie Clark. This is a domestic thriller, kind of with a twist, kind of with like a more interesting and compelling synopsis. This is about two, I think, seemingly strangers who meet at an airport and kind of trade identities, except for one of them ends up dying and the other person has to like fully and truly assume the other person's identity. Curious to see kind of where that leads and what consequences that has for the person who is still alive and if that other person is actually dead. But this is one that sounds pretty interesting and I am excited to give it a go. Something about airport thrillers just work for me. I really liked Peter Swanson's book that was set at an airport. Can't remember the name of that one. It's the only Peter Swanson book I've ever liked. So hopefully this one will be just as likable. Next up, we have Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. From what I know, this is a gender bent Reese, I think, like a queer Grease retelling. I have had this one on my radar. I do have some friends that have liked this one and I haven't read much more about this synopsis than that. I feel like that's enough to make me interested in a book in general, and I am very excited to give this one a go, so thank you to the publisher Wednesday Books for sending this to me. Next up, I have Back in the Burbs by Tracy Wolf and Avery Flynn. This is one that got put on my radar by a couple of bookstagrammers and was kindly sent to me by Entangled, which I'm very excited about. This book is about our main character, Mallory, whose great aunt recently died and left her a house in the suburbs. Mallory is grieving the death of Maggie quite a bit. She is kind of struggling, and whenever she goes to Aunt Maggie's old house, Mallory ends up being hit with like a lot of HOA violations. She has to kind of clean this house up and get it ready to sell maybe, or maybe she's going to live there. I'm not entirely sure, but she does meet the grumpy hot neighbor who she, I believe, ends up falling for. So excited to read this one. It seems like a really fun summary rom-com, and I'm hoping to get to this one sometime in the summer. I definitely need to plan a fun 
Allen vlog that includes this book. Next up is a historical fiction. Again, this is one that I picked up somewhat on a whim, but it was also one that y'all recommended to me, and it is The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetys. This is about the Spanish Civil War, and it is a YA historical fiction book. I decided to pick this one up because so many of you recommended it when I requested historical fiction recommendations. I don't know, I felt like YA might be a little bit more accessible than some of the adult titles I have, like The Four Winds and Where the Crawdads Sing. So I'm hoping that this one, you know, if anything, is the winner in that video. So many of y'all seem to like this one, so I'm willing to give this one a try. And this isn't a time period in history that I know a whole ton about, so I will be very excited to at least get the knowledge from this, even if it is not the perfect read for me. Next up is another historical fiction. I had really only intended on doing three historical fiction books for that vlog that I'm planning, but now that I have four, I feel like I might just round it out and make it an even five. So if you have any like historical fiction recommendations, put them down in the comments below. Uh, but the next book that I picked up was Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. So this book is set in the early 1900s in Korea, and it's about our main character, Sunja. Our heroine ends up coming pregnant by a man who she didn't realize was already married, and instead of being bought off by him and his family, she decides that she is going to marry a minister who's just passing through on his way to Japan, and she decides to kind of leave her homeland and everything she knows from what I can understand from the back of this book. So very excited to try this one. I've heard nothing but good things about this book. I've heard that it takes maybe a little bit to get into, but I feel like I'm definitely up for the challenge, and I'm very excited to get into this one for that historical fiction reading vlog. So that'll probably be coming sometime later this year. And again, I'm going to try to find a fifth book for that video now, but very excited to have picked this up. I got this from Barnes & Noble and I think I got it on a deal. Yeah, the, the buy one, get one 50% deal. So very excited to have this one. Next up is another damn Katie Coulson <laughs> impulse purchase here. I have The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter by Theodora Goss. I started this one on audio for a vlog where I was like, being other booktubers for a day. And that reading vlog was not very successful, but I got a little bit of the way into this and it was pretty interesting. Planning on picking this book up again sometime in the fall. And I don't know, maybe I'll do like a Katie Colson taste test at some point. I don't know, maybe, maybe. But excited to get to this one at some point anyway, because it just seems like it's something that would be up my alley, especially in the fall time. I didn't really say what this book is about, but it's basically about the daughters of different historical like monsters or like monster creators, like the daughter of Jekyll, the daughter of Hyde, the daughter of Frankenstein, and none of these girls initially knew that they were created, I believe. Anyway, they like team up to solve a mystery together, and I don't know, I had a good time reading it when I did read it, like the, the part that I did read, but I'll be picking this up sometime again this fall. <laughs> I'm looking at this book and I'm just genuinely wondering why I picked this up because it was not for a video. I don't even know what it's about. It's called Yes and I Love You by Ronnie Lauren. Okay, actually no, I do know why I picked this up. I was perusing Burns Noble as one does, and I wanted to pick up a book that I had never heard anything about and had never heard anyone talk about because I feel like I so seldom do that anymore. Again, everything's for a video or it is a book that I got on recommendation from someone else, which is not inherently a bad thing, but sometimes I just want to not be influenced. I want to just pick something up on my own. This one is about our heroine who is kind of an influencer, but she's sort of anonymous online and no one really knows who she is in real life. And she ends up getting kind of in an unexpected fake dating situation with an actor. And I'm just excited to see where this one goes. I actually, I think posted about this one on my story and someone said, that while this looks like a like women's fiction chick lit kind of book, Ronnie Lauren tends to actually write romances. So I'm hoping that this one does feel more romance centric than chick lit. But I liked the cover and it seemed like a good book and it wasn't one that I had heard anyone talk about. So I decided to give it a try and maybe I will read this in a vlog coming up. Not that everything has to be for a vlog, but I feel like that might be fun, you know? Books that I have never heard of, or maybe you've never heard of. Have you heard of this book? Let me know. We're coming down to our last four books. I promise this is almost over. Uh, we have Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. Of course, I had to pick up a physical copy of this book. I have an audiobook copy from Libro FM as a part of their influencer program, and I started it and I didn't dislike it per se, but I will say I had a better time reading a physical copy of Take a Hint, Danny Brown than I did listening to an audiobook copy of Get a Life, Chloe Brown. So I figured maybe physical reading was the way to go with the series. So I just picked up the physical copy. It is beautiful. It's gonna look really good on the shelf back here with all of my other paperback romances. But this one is about Eve Brown, who I don't know that much about, but I do know that she is the youngest sister and she's kind of a hot mess. She ends up going work, I wanna say it like, yeah, a B&B, &B, a bed and breakfast that's understaffed and she kind of like lies about her skills. I wanna say that she is a cook <laughs> at this B&B &B for a little while and she ends up kind of frustrating the 
boss there because she kind of like lied about her skills obviously um, and I think it's their romance and I want to say I could be wrong but I feel like there is autism rep I feel like our hero has autism and I want to say our heroine might as well I could be totally wrong on that but I'm very excited to give this one a try I absolutely love to take a hint Danny Brown which I read as a part of like the Goodreads Choice Awards romance video that I did and this one I would be surprised if it wouldn't be a nominee this year in general I just want to read this book so I'll be reading this at some point soon next up is a book that I picked up for a video and it is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Dare and I tried to pick this one up on audio but I didn't connect super well with the audio version of this I just like could not focus whenever I was listening so I decided I'd just pick up a physical copy and get through it that way the cover is absolutely beautiful too so if I do end up loving this book it's gonna look great on my shelves but this one is about a girl in rural Nigeria who is trying to get out of a tough situation and find education for herself I'm glad I picked this one up again it's for a video and hopefully that video will be coming out sometime in the next week or so I have another book that I have to read other than this one that is quite long for that video so no promises but like it is coming soon you'll get my thoughts on this book in that video so stay tuned obviously subscribe if you're not already subscribed I've never said that in a video before but you know what if you feel so inclined and compelled feel free and then my last two books this one I am not saying that I was influenced by the shadow and bone show to pick this book up but also I kind of was also the unwrapped or like undust jacketed version of this book Whew. She's beautiful. I have Rule of Wolves by Leigh Bartugo. Have I read King of Scars? Absolutely not. Will I be reading that at some point this year? I can't say that I will, to be honest. I do have it. I will read it at some point, but I don't have any like imminent plans to read it. This one is Nikolai's story. Like the duology in general is like the Nikolai duology. This is what the naked hardcover looks like. I mean, it was mighty tempting, might I say, when I picked this one up. And you know what? I just wanted to complete my collection of Leigh Bardugo books. At this point, I do, I think, have all of her books besides like any short story collections or whatever that she might have. Yeah, was it the smartest decision? No, I'm trying to make less decisions like this, you know? Yes, I like Leigh Bardugo, but if I haven't read the other book in the series, do I need to pick this one up? No. Anyway, I own it now, and hopefully I'll read it at some point. And then the last book is one that I have read before, and it is a book that I knew that I needed after I read it on audio. It is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I am so excited to have this one. This is a book that, not to be rude to any of these books, like, if I could only have one book from all of these books, it would be this one, because I enjoyed this one so immensely, and this is kind of like, the attitude I want to have about books going forward. If I really enjoyed the book, like from reading it from my library, that's when I can purchase a physical copy for my own shelves. This book is about our main character, Brie, who has had kind of a rough go of things lately. Her mom recently died under kind of mysterious circumstances. And while Brie is super excited to get into this like college program at UNC Chapel Hill, she is still grieving the death of her mother and it's still really affecting her. And some kind of weird things start going on on campus at UNC. And she ends up kind of finding out more about the mysterious circumstances surrounding her mother's death and more about who Brie is and who her family is as well. So this was fantastic. I gave this book five stars. If you're looking for a recommendation from this video, um, it would be to pick up this book for sure. Like I said, if I could only give you one recommendation from these books, not that I've really read any of these other books, it would still be Legendborn because this is one of my favorite books of the year and I really, really enjoyed it. But now that I've done the haul portion of this video, I thought we could chat just a little bit about why this is going to be my last book haul ever on this channel, which sounds so dramatic and you know what? It kind of is. But I just feel like my mindset is shifting a lot and I just kind of wanted to share that with y'all. So I want to say first off, this is a no way like a commentary on consumerism or my opinions on other people's book buying habits because frankly I just really don't care if other people want to buy all of the books in the world. There have been time periods in my life where that has been something that has really excited me and been something that I really wanted to do but I do feel like there's this saying that goes around often <laughs> in the book community that book buying and book reading are two completely different hobbies and I do have to kind of agree with that. I feel like I buy books and they do usually have to do with videos in some form or fashion. Like I tend to pick books up with the best of intentions that I'm going to read it for a video and it's going to happen. Um, but a lot of the times, let's be honest, books end up just kind of sitting on my shelves and not getting read. And I hate that. Like there have been some books on my shelves that have been there for three or four years. And when I finally go to pick it up, I'm like, this is something that I'm not even interested in reading anymore. So, you know, sometimes book buying is a very momentary decision. Like, oh, this sounds good. And then a couple of months later, I'm like, I don't actually want to read this or my tastes have changed. Or I figured out that like that particular trope isn't something I like. And I've really been connecting more with my public library system. I would say not 90% of the books that I read are from my library, but at this point, a lot of them are. I tend to not even touch the books on my shelves. I just go to my library 
library, check out audiobooks, check out ebooks. Those are kind of my preferred mediums anyway. And that's just kind of how I've been consuming books and it got me to kind of look at my, you know, buying patterns and my habits and stuff. I mean, this year in general has kind of like taught me to look at those things, but knowing more about my habits and knowing more about kind of what I want has helped me decide that I just don't want to buy books anymore, like really at all. Whenever I bought Legendborn, I would say that I really felt like this was a really intentional purchase. I felt really good about it. I knew that this is a book that I'm going to reread, a book that I want to continue on in the series with, and that's just kind of the attitude I want to have with books going forward. I'm not saying I'm never going to buy a book, obviously, but I want to check books out from my library, figure out what I like, and then if there's a book that I just am desperate to have a physical copy of, I will buy one then. And for me, it's really not about having too many things or buying too many things or, you know, being consumeristic. Like, I don't really care about that aspect of things. I just want to make smarter decisions for myself and I just I feel guilty when I buy a ton of things and then they just kind of go to waste or I have all of these books on my shelf and then eventually I don't end up wanting to read half of them. It just seems sort of silly for me, I guess. And just in general, I think my life has changed a lot <laughs> over the past three years that I have been on this platform in a good way. Uh, when I first started YouTube, it was very much my creative outlet and also just an outlet to escape from the world in general. I was post-grad when I started my channel and I really didn't have a lot of direction in terms of where I wanted my life to go outside of YouTube. So I just use this as kind of like as a way to channel all of my energy. I wanted to have all of the friends in the book community. I wanted to only buy books. I wanted to only focus all of my energy on making videos. And while I still like all of those things to an extent, I just, I don't know, my life has gotten so much bigger and better and has so much more like diversity in it in terms of what I like to do and the things that I like to have as hobbies. I'm never going to stop making book videos and I'm never going to stop loving books, but buying books is a very different hobby. And I think in general, it's just reflective of greater changes that you're going to see on my channel. I'll talk more about that in my kind of like six month check-in on my goals but I've really just been having a change of heart on kind of where I want my content to go. Not that I don't love doing all of my creative videos and things like that, but I've just been wanting to share more of my life and more of my interests with y'all because I feel like for the first time in a while, I, I do have other interests and I do have other things that I think are exciting and fun and like I want to share with y'all. And honestly, I just wanna get back to my love of reading and just being able to kind of spontaneously pick up books, which my library helps me do compared to just like, you know, having books that are sh sitting on my shelves that might not be interesting to me two or three months from now. So that was a very long-winded way of saying my life is changing and for the better, I think, in a lot of ways. So you're not going to see any of this kind of content for me going forward. I might do like book on hauls in the future because I'm assuming, hopefully, as I read through some of the stuff, I, I do want to get rid of it. But I, I don't think I'm going to be buying books in mass like I have in the past. It doesn't interest me as much and I want to, you know, still be creative with my videos in a way that doesn't necessitate me buying a ton of books. Maybe just, you know, checking them out for my library. So I feel like this is a very convoluted way of saying that my channel is changing a little bit. I'm growing up and changing a little bit and book hauls just don't really have a place in my world right now. That's no judgment on other people and I will be watching a lot of book hauls in the future because I love watching these videos and hopefully you enjoy this in some way as well. So thanks so much for watching. I love y'all so much and until next Sunday.